Hello and welcome to another PH video blog. Today I am at Estoril in Portugal for the launch of the new Honda NSX. The yellow car you see behind me is of course an original Honda NSX, but they brought that along to help us put the new one in context. Now, we rather like the old car, so let's have a quick look around that while we head over to the new one. This particular car has been brought along by a local owner apparently, loaned to Honda for the event. He's called it an Etten Senna edition, he's added a few Type R bits just to liven it up a bit. Now of course you could argue that every NSX is an Etten Senna edition because of that man's involvement with the car and his association with it from the very earliest days. The new one we have here, now just to fill you in, the sequence of events today is a little bit out of the ordinary because we've arrived at the circuit, we haven't had our technical briefing yet, so we haven't really had the full run through of what goes into the car and there's a lot that has gone into it. So we will drive the car on a circuit, we will drive the car on a road. First of all, I think probably the best thing is just to have a quick look around it and get a feel for it. This is the first time that we've seen the car away from the motor shows, so it's nice to see it out in the real world. First impressions are that it looks very technical, uh, very Japanese, which is kind of appropriate really. It looks a little bit more compact than I'd expected, which is nice because obviously a lot of modern supercars have got a bit big and bloaty. So in some ways it's very true to the original in that it's compact and very uh, honest to its roots. Now, it's a very technical looking car, which is kind of again appropriate because there isn't an awful lot going on under the skin but there are a few design features that you don't necessarily pick up on in the photos. One of them which I'd missed was this kind of open buttress design which is kind of like a less extreme version of what you get on the Ford GT. Overall it's, I don't know, I'm gonna have to have a think about it. I'm gonna dip in with some thoughts when I've learned a bit more about the car as we go on through the day once I've driven it, things like that, once we've had the technical briefing. But it's certainly an interesting looking car and it comes at a very interesting price point as well. So this car costs 137 grand, starts at 137 grand. It has 584 horsepower from a combined petrol electric drivetrain. It's up against, for this kind of price, a McLaren 570S, which of course has 570 horsepower, an Audi R8 with 610 horsepower, Porsche 9 and Turbo 580 horsepower, all similar money. But of course the fact that the Honda pairs a twin turbo V6 with three electric motors, two on the front axle, one connected to the gearbox, gives it a bit of a unique selling proposition at this price point. Now, as I said, there's a lot to understand about this car, so I think we need to go and learn about it, drive it, and then I will come back and tell you a bit more. Right, so I've got one lap of Estoril circuits to try and tell you about a car about which I know quite a little so far. Now, let's go with the basics. All right, coming out of the pit lane. Remember, we have 581 horsepower, of which the vast majority is going to the back wheel. So although we've got the electric power going to the front axle, it actually has a fairly minimal influence on the dynamic balance of the car. Now, other big thing to remember is the weight of this car. So depending on how you crunch the numbers with the driver on board, it weighs nearly 1,900 kilos. That is a hell of a lot. And if you're looking at a comparison, the McLaren 570S, which costs the same sort of money as this car, weighs about 400 kilos less. 400 kilos, that is an astonishing amount. Now, what's impressive is how light this car feels. They've done a really good job. So many systems competing with steering input, throttle application, you've got the four-wheel independent powertrain going on, you've got torque vectoring, you've got all sorts, but it actually feels really natural and really nice. The steering is pretty sharp. The brake pedal has a slight weird feel to it. It's not always consistent, but overall the balance and if you give it gas it then you get just a nice little rotation there under power. That just gives you a sense of how much they've been able to dial in the feeling of a, of a proper rear wheel drive supercar and that's really really impressive to say that this is also a car that can drive itself purely on electric power when you're just bimbling around town but out here on a track it still has a sense of that adjustability that you want out of a proper sports car. It's really, really impressive. Now, we're coming up to this tight first corner, Estoril, third gear corner, 
if I get on the gas really early, it just picks up. You've got a nice combination of traction and speed, and I think, although it's heavy, you don't really feel that. It's nicely balanced, just the whole car is really beautifully balanced. And for all that technology, there is a lovely natural feel to it. I mean, we've seen this in other hybrid hypercars, like the 918 Spider and things like that. They're hugely complicated cars with so much getting in the way of your interaction with the car. But frankly, it all comes down to the calibration. I think they've done a blinding job with this. And it feels plenty quick enough, and it sounds great. And being a Honda, it revs as well. So, I think there are some caveats. It's not a track car, but I think the car I would compare it to in terms of its positioning and its ideology would be an R8. And I've driven an R8 on track, and frankly, it wasn't really that exciting. A 610 horsepower car with a naturally aspirated V10, and I'm here saying that it wasn't that exciting. Honda, I think, has managed to dial in just enough excitement into the NSX to make it rewarding to drive on a circuit. I haven't driven it on the road yet, but I'll be very interested to see how it deals with that. But in terms of balancing front to rear power, mixing and matching the electric and the petrol engine, I think this is a blinding piece of work. I look forward to driving on the road. Right, so welcome to the next instalment of this slightly topsy-turvy Honda NSX launch event. Now we're driving it on the road, which is where apparently this car is designed to work best of all. And we'll have a little bit of a play with the various modes at our disposal. Right now, we are in the quiet mode. And this is the setting that you want for late night returns home or early morning starts apparently wafting around the suburbs so Honda has it and this is the most mellow setting gives the most mellow throttle most mellow dampers and when it deems fit it will switch to all electric mode it doesn't seem to do that very often at least not while I've been driving it but maybe that's just me now then the roads are getting a little bit twistier so I think I might go into sport mode there are apparently 11 parameters controlled by this mode dial None of which I can remember right now, but all the usual things really. Stability control, noise, throttle response, all the various torque vectoring systems and all that. Now, apparently, there is as much as 26 decibels difference in the exhaust between quiet mode and track. That's quite a lot. It's a funky exhaust system where the noisier setting just goes pretty much straight through to the center two of the four exhausts and then when you're dialed back then it goes through some additional silencing and the altitude but for kind of mooching about as I say we're now in sport mode and this is what Honda says is the meant to be the kind of default NSX mode this is the one that shows the car in its best light now we're also in automatic now the gearing is quite interesting, we've got nine gears, you might think that's a little bit bewildering, but really, first is only for the launch control, apparently, and ninth is a kind of cruising gear, an economy gear. So really, you're talking seven relatively evenly spaced gears for general driving. And I found on the track, really, that I was generally just shifting between third, fourth and fifth, the kind of gears you want to be using on a track, really. And I think as we go up to, I mean, we're going to Sport Plus mode, we'll go to Manual. We're getting promised some twists and turns now, so hopefully this will be a little bit more encouraging for pressing on a bit and shifting away from the kind of hybrid electric powered aspect of the NSX and delving more into its angry supercar side. Here's hoping. Now on the street, you can feel a surprising amount of influence from those motors on the front axle, and as you can hear, it now sounds like a very different car from the one we were driving on just a moment ago. That's thanks to some noise being piped through an extra throttle chamber and through some ducting that comes out through the bulkhead. And out here on the road, 
is really quite nice. The size and the visibility all count in your favour. And the flexibility you get from those electric motors filling in any gaps there might be from the turbos really works. And that's the thing, there's an awful lot of clever stuff going on. Wheels being braked, wheels being sped up, torque vectoring, all sorts of stuff. But you never really, it doesn't feel intrusive, it just feels fairly natural. And that's really impressive. I think that's credit to the calibration done by the engineers, all these amazingly complex systems can successfully talk to each other and make it a kind of an intuitive driving experience. So yes, on a road, it's an exciting car to drive. On the a little bit sneaky putting the cars that we were driving on the track on Trofeo tyres. We're just on standard road tyres now, but frankly, given how high the ability of this car are, I don't think that's really a major problem. And I think one of the most startling things is, given this is, if you had two powerfully built occupants, potentially a two-ton car, yes, a two-ton supercar, it's remarkable how it shrugs that off and manages to feel agile and chuckable. So I guess in conclusion, we have to think about the NSX is it's impossible to escape the idea that it's very impressive what they've done with all the hybrid modes and the clever tech and all that kind of thing, but this engine, this internal combustion engine behind me, this lovely high revving twin turbo V6 already has over 500 horsepower, over 400 pound feet of torque. If this car weighed three or 400 kilos less, would it actually be any slower than it is with all the electric gubbins? And it's a tantalising prospect because that would be a really, really nice car. But I guess Honda has to add some tech, it has to add something into it to make it stand out from the big players already in the market. So you're left with this odd sense that it's incredibly impressive but what's the point of all that tech? If I could have a Type R without all the hybrid stuff in it, I think I'd be a very happy man. As it stands, I'm a slightly confused one. <laughs>